Hello again, everybody. This is Steve Callis speaking of sports, and I'm here again with Anthony Sorbellini, our uh, Iona College grad student intern, and we're going to talk, continue to talk about various members who have been inducted into the 2020 Basketball Hall of Fame. This time we're going to talk about Kevin Garnett, uh, and as many of you know, again, these guys are Lock Hall of Famers, Kobe, Garnett. Uh, we'll talk about Tim Duncan, even Tamika Catchings from the WNBA. They're all locks. There's not really a question which you have sometimes, should that person really be in the Hall of Fame? But Garnett spent uh, you know, the beginning of his career in Minnesota. He was kind of lost there with uh, Stefan Marbury. They were good, but never quite good enough. But Garnett showed an incredible intensity. Uh, he was an incredible defensive player. As you probably know, he had to go to Boston to win his championship in uh 2008 with Paul Pierce and, and those guys, Ray Allen, Ray Jean Rondo. Uh, but he was an all-time great, especially on the defensive end. He was a great offensive player, too. But the most impressive thing to me about this class in general, and Garnett in particular, he was a nine-time first-team All-NBA defensive player and by the way, I was remiss in the Kobe video without saying Kobe did the same thing. Kobe and Garnett both were nine-time first-team All-NBA defensive players. Now, that says to me they didn't go back to Bill Russell's era with the Defensive Player of the Year, or, or at least, I'm sorry, with the uh, Defensive First Team of the Year. But that's another story for another time. I don't want to take anything away from Garnett. Incredibly intense player, incredibly great player. Anthony Sorbellini, give me your thoughts on Kevin Garnett. 2020 Hall of Famer. I mean, you see uh, KG, you know, remember, I mean, grow, I mean, for me specifically, my generation, my era, you know, watching him play in Boston, you know, he was kind of going neck and neck with the Lakers then for a couple of years um, in those finals. But, you know, watching KG play, he was kind of that always like smash mouth, like, oh, boom, like I'm in your face, the ultimate trash talker. But then, you know, his game supported his trash talk, so he wasn't one of those guys, you know, just barking up and doesn't have anything. I mean, obviously he could play, you know, you just touched on some of his stats, but he was just, he was fun to watch, fun to not only watch, like, what he did on the court, but also just how he would kind of, you know, antagonize, mess with, mess with his opponents. Absolutely. Four-time NBA rebound leader as well. Uh, but what I remember most about him is his intensity. On the one hand, yes, he had a great joy playing the game, mm -hmm. but he also was incredibly intense and would get in guys' faces. In fact, would get in guys on his own team's faces as well. Yeah. Uh, I think that it all goes to part of the intensity that made a guy like Kevin Garnett, to me, a lock Hall of Famer, a great scorer, 26,000-plus points. Uh, he was really a great all-around player, and I'll say it again, the theme for me through the Hall of Fame, the ones we're going to talk about, uh, beginning with Kobe, who we already did, now Kevin Garnett, I'm sure we'll do Duncan next. These guys were such great two-way players, and I continue to say on these videos, mm -hmm. that's kind of a lost art today. You've got, you know, a Kawhi Leonard, absolutely, a LeBron James, absolutely, and you can name a few others. But these guys back then, they were intense, they were scary they were intimidating they were all of that but they were also great players as well and most importantly to me great players on uh, both ends of the court as i'm sure you know garnett was also an olympic gold medal winner mm -hmm. so of course that's a big deal and another good line on his resume so give me any other thoughts you have uh, garnett through the years especially that championship year with the celtics when they beat the lakers beat kobe and the lakers right. in 2000 and eight. You know, like I, I've alluded to in the Kobe video, really didn't watch too, too much basketball growing up as a kid. But, you know, every once in a while I'd be flipping through, flipping through the channels, you know, in case there wasn't a baseball game or anything on, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be like, what the hell, let's go watch the NBA Finals. And that that was fun to see. I mean, you know, you had Kobe on the on on the Lakers with Pau Gasol, and then you had the big three with Rondo and, you know, led by, by Kevin Garnett and just – I remember seeing, <laughs> I remember seeing uh, as KG was warming up, you know, they're getting ready for the opening tip off, the uh, starting fives for both squads getting ready to take the court, and KG just started bashing his head into the, 
into the uh, the padding under on the basket. And I'm like, this guy is psychotic, but at a, at a at the same thing, like he's a baller. He's gonna go out. I mean, that's his like, that's I guess you know his preparation. So I mean, big big moment. You know, why not go bash your head into a into a hoop a couple times? Yep, and and of course that after the game, anything's possible. Scream almost after they had finally won it. Um, I didn't think it was so miraculous that they won it. They had a heck of a team, right. but they beat the Lakers. Uh, just a couple other things: a 15-time All Star, um, the Defensive Player of the Year, not just All NBA First Team, Defensive Player of the Year in 2008. So this guy obviously has all the statistics. But I think he has also that non-statistical stuff that you just talked about. Um, really intense, really competitive, uh, really gets after it, really love the game. Another great work ethic a la Kobe. And I think these are the kind of things that combine in these guys to make them the all-time greats that they are. I don't have Garnett as high as I do a Kobe mm -hmm. or a Tim Duncan. But again, both ends of the floor – uh, certainly one of the 20 greatest players in my view to ever play the game. Any final thoughts? Well, yeah, I mean, just touching, just piggybacking off of that thought just a little bit. I know that we've talked about, especially in the Kobe video and even touched on on this one, that, you know, that they're both ends of the floor. You know, they're not just one-way players. And I think if you and I were to have this conversation even five years from now, discussing breaking down the Basketball Hall of Fame, we're not going to be like, oh, he was a great uh, – scorer and defender it's going to be he was either a great scorer or he was a great defender so that's kind of i believe like this class and probably class within the next two or three years probably will like will be start trickling out you know the players of the 90s kind of those great like all around all around ball players yeah i think that's true this is steve callis speaking of sports along with anthony sorbellini we'll see you the next time